reseller and look this is how I used to shoot my old videos but we're gonna do sorry about the chair we're gonna do a quarterly update so January 1 through March 31 2021 as everybody knows well not everybody knows I'm transparent as can be I'll show you my numbers I'm not afraid of that um, IRS is gonna see them anyhow uh, gets reported so uh, I just want you to see them so that you can understand that you can do this, that you it, you know you can make money, and you can make good money at eBay. Now I want to give you a couple of disclaimers. First, I'm in a very wealthy area, which is the San Jose area of California, basically Silicon Valley. A lot of money here, so it's a lot different than everybody else. So do not look at these numbers and say, hey, I'm in a rural area and you you know you can do this type of thing. I, I, I don't know. I don't know your situation or whatever where you're at. So it, it's difficult for me to uh, kind of relate to that. You have to remember I'm in such a very, very um, wealthy area. And uh, I find a lot of very, very good, good items. We're going to show you some at the end, just to kind of show you some of the items that got me to these numbers over the past year, basically. So we have to remember that, all right? I'm totally transparent. I know people are going to say, oh, wow, you're in a different area. I get it. I understand 100%. But there are some things you can do to help improve your uh profitability, that kind of thing, and how you can go about your day and make, make some good money. So we'll chit chat a little bit about that, and then we'll get into the numbers, and then we'll show you some items that I sold, all right? So first off, you know, um, I, I'm a little different. I've had a business for 30 years prior to this, and um, so I had some good discipline in that, and I also made a lot of mistakes in my business too, so don't, don't get me wrong there. But I think what you have to have in every type of entrepreneurship is good habits. You have to force yourself to create good habits. So you're doing things that are positive, not negative, and not repeating them over and over. You learn from those mistakes and you create these good habits. And the habits will, uh, you know, ingrain themselves in you and you'll become better at everything. So keep that in mind, you know, um, it's hard. We all have bad habits, um, you know, from whatever, it, from whatever it is, we just do. We, we, we have them and they, they get a hold of us. But if we create good habits, then uh, things are going to be a lot better. So that's, that's one thing I try to do and uh, I try to work hard at that. Another, another thing you need is patience. If you're first starting out, you, you're just not going to jump through the, you're just not going to skyrocket. I'm very unique. Uh, just to show you, you can go back and watch some of my older videos. Uh, this is April 23rd, 2021. April 1st of 2019, I think that's two years, right? Two years. That's when I started this. Only two years, okay? So it can be done quickly. But I made a ton of mistakes within that first six to eight months. A lot of mistakes, and I'm there sitting in my garage, and they're going to be going out of here in a with a garage sale in the coming weeks, because I'm going to clean out some of the old stuff that I made mistakes on. And what we're trying to do is have you um, not make the mistakes that I made. Uh, those kind of things, you know, not buying just to buy that kind of thing. Buying smart. That's what you have to do, buy smart. You can't buy just to buy. Sometimes the best thing is coming out of a store with nothing. I've come out of five, six stores in a row with nothing. And that's, you know, fine with me because eventually I'm gonna hit something. As you can see from my numbers and from the items that I pick up, I do hit big items. All right, so you need patience. Let it come to you. It will, as long as you keep up with the good habits and everything else, if you keep up with that and you're patient, things will fall into your lap. They really will. All right, you have to have hustle. That means you're, you're, you know, you're gonna work. Basically, hustle to me is work. Um, you I, I am up in the morning at six o'clock 
and I'm in bed probably at midnight every single night. So that's my routine, basically, six to midnight. Uh, I enjoy that. That gets me, you know, moving and motivated. So you're going to need some hustle. You're going to need some effort. You're going to need other things like that to make it really work. It, it just doesn't, you know, tumble into your hands like we, like we, people sometimes these, these channels make it sound like, you know, you see it all the time, do this and do this and you're going to, it doesn't work that way, guys. It doesn't, you know, don't fall for that stuff. It requires work and it's just the way it is. So don't go for all the, all the hype on the instant fortune, fame, whatever, or money. It, it does, 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 does not happen. All right. Um, you need a great routine. And this is kind of weird, but it is a routine. You have to have an everyday pattern of what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, how you're going to get from A to Z throughout the day. So, you know, like for me, I'll give you my, I'll give you my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday pattern. My Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday pattern. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning from 9 to 11 is books. From 11 on is savers, goodwill, that kind of thing. Um, sometimes it gets switched up in the pattern after 11 o'clock, but it's still a very set pattern or routine. And if you keep with that routine, you're going to learn store patterns, what stores are doing what, when they put things out, and if the store is working that day, it's, it's kind of weird, but you're going to get a feel for that, that kind of thing. So if like, for example, if I show up at Savers at 11 and I just get the feel by talking to employees and, and, you know, I know employees and say, Hey, how's things going? They say, ah, there's not much coming through. Well, that's an alert to say, Hey, look, I'm not going to spend much time here. I'm going to go give myself a good looking on the store and then move from that store to the next store. I'm going to give myself the best chance at making money that day or finding that one item. So that's what I've got to do. I got to create this routine. I've got to understand how the stores work, how the, the personnel works, what they, when they bring carts out, when they don't bring carts out, when they stop bringing carts out, who brings out carts in the afternoon, who brings carts out in the morning. That's what you got to know. That's your routine. That increases your odds of getting the items that I'm going to show you in a minute and getting some good numbers. So really try to figure out your routine, stick to your routine, then just base off of that. So just kind of um, uh, keep that in mind. Keep working off of uh, off that routine and you'll, uh, uh, you'll increase your odds, all right? Uh, next is networking. Networking is very important especially nowadays. And what I mean by networking is getting to know other pickers. Yes, you must know other pickers. You must know who they are, kind of know what they like. Uh, they may like clothing. They may like electronics. They may like glass. They may like whatever. Get to know them and let them know who you are because you will be amazed that if there's a guy who's in clothing and doesn't like electronics, he might alert you to something that you like, and you might alert him to something he likes. So this networking also then starts to work its way around uh, when you start picking up phone numbers and so forth. They'll say, hey, Mike, I was over at this garage sale, they had this. And if you uh, ever saw my video with the hutch where I got that uh, mid-century modern hutch for $30 and flipped it for 2000 that was a good friend picker who told me that was there. He didn't want to deal with it. I went over, looked at it, and picked it up, and I sold it for $2,000 on Facebook Marketplace. That's networking. You've got to kind of, you know, get out there and don't be afraid of, uh, don't be afraid of these uh, um, uh, pickers or other people. Let them know, you know, let them know what you do, what you like, that kind of thing. So don't be afraid of that. You'll be amazed at how many um, uh, items you pick up from, from networking. Uh, I'm working on a pretty big one right now with a guy who uh, is, uh, is, he empties estates out and stuff like that. And he's got a bunch of storage lockers and I'm working on getting into those storage lockers and picking some stuff from him. He needs help, you know, getting this stuff out 
and, and I'm there and I can help uh, help him with that. All right, what else we got? Okay, my number one rule is no death pile. I'm telling you right now, the death pile will do you in. You can see behind me, it's over here. Uh, that's something I'm putting on my house. That's a book, and there's a few Amazons tucked right there. Otherwise, that's the only stuff that's in my house right now. If you look through my house, that's it. So everything as of today, I'll actually say everything as of tonight. I've, I've taken pictures of probably about 10 or 12 items already. Those 10 will go up tonight. That's it. Tomorrow's Saturday, and I am completely free of anything as far as uh, having the list so I can go out and fresh pick and not have to worry about it. If I pick up 10 items tomorrow, I'll photograph them tomorrow and they'll be up the same night. If you watch me and you watch my videos, you'll see that my stuff comes up very quickly and it sells very quickly because I price it competitively. I want it to move. All right. So those are kind of some of the things that I think about as I'm out uh, doing my thing. Uh, hopefully we'll do some other things and let you you know get a better idea see how it works I'm trying to shoot more video insides uh, Some of these places so you can kind of get a feel for what's going on But it's I'm still that's one area. I need a lot of improvement on All right guys, let's get right into it. Let's go Let's go and take a look at some numbers, huh? Let's look at some numbers. All right first up. Let's go get January through March of 2020. This is last year. So we have a comparison all right, there we go. It's going to cover my head, but I think I can shrink it. All right, I think I, there we go. I'll, I'll cover it a little bit. My total sales for that three month period in 2020 were 30,418. Take away all that stuff from them, it left me with 19,643. That was last year, one year ago. All right, not bad. Very good. You know, uh, about $10,000 a month right there. Whoops, let me make sure I don't screw this up. All right, now let's take a look at this quarter, January through March 2021. All right, now look at it. Total sales, 50110 Taxes, 2722 Selling costs, 12000 it's 24%, but that's all the shipping and everything I think it's in there. I, I still can't figure out eBay when it comes to that. It says my net sales after all of that was 35,2681. And I've got other things I gotta take out of there, right? Cost of goods, all that kind of stuff. So 50,000. So twenty thousand dollar increase from last year to this year. Work that number out. That's two hundred thousand dollars in sales um, this year. Last year I did 174, I think, somewhere around there. I believe I'm gonna get to about 210. That's probably Excuse me. That's probably my realistic realistic goal, but there you go. Fifty thousand uh one hundred and ten dollars in this last uh basically quarter. All right. Let's go over here and we're gonna take a look at my last 30 days, just to show you my last 30 days. My last 30 days is sitting at twenty-three thousand oh twenty-six. So twenty-three thousand. So I picked up. I, January and February, I seem to struggle. I don't know why, but I do. And I picked up in the last 31 days to get to that uh, um, that quarter um, of whatever that quarter helped me out a little bit, that last 31, because today is the 23rd. So, you know, I started to pick up steam. But let's take a look now at the current 90-day total. So my current 90-day total, I got pretty big, well. Wow. Okay, my current 90-day total is $56,077, okay? So multiply that out. There you go, right? There's, you know, that's is that 224000 something like that, averaged out over the year. And I have a lot of actives. I have 1,084 actives, 771 solds. I like to have a one-for-one. -one. But a lot of that active stuff is going to be gone out of here when I run a garage sale in the next couple of weeks to get rid of probably 300 or so items or maybe more. To get me more in balance to that one-on-one, -on -one, okay? I have five today. Nothing great today, which I'm very happy for, believe it or not. I just, I did a lot today. And four of them are easy and one's a big amplifier, pretty easy ship. So, pretty easy ship. Anyhow, so 56,000 for the last 90 days. 
So I'm going strong in this first quarter, and uh, we'll see how it goes throughout the year. We got to keep hustling, hustling, hustling. All right, now what we need to do here is take a look at some of the things that I sold over the last year, kind of. I, I just kind of randomly shoved a bunch of stuff in here. There might be a few you've already seen, but um, we're going to shove them in and, and take a look, and we'll go through them pretty quickly. Sorry for the camera. I don't have a great uh, camera uh, camera hookup here. All right, let's take a look. Let's go to our first item here. Come on, talk to me. All right, that's a big one. Like I said, I kind of randomly put this in. This was an Escobar espresso machine. I do well with those. I love those when I find them. Now, I'm not afraid to ship this. Look at this thing. This thing is eight, $800, and as I remember, this thing was about 70 pounds. It went to Washington, as I remember, and it was $150 to ship. And I don't think it cost me $150. It's probably about $80 or $90, but I really had to package this really good. And as you can see, I got positive feedback received on this particular unit. So, uh, you know, you need some of these items to really make uh, the numbers. And, then, and that's what I look for. I'm not afraid of these. Many people will pass this up. As a matter of fact, this was given to me by another picker. As I walked in the store, they said, Mike, this is for you. I remember exactly. I paid $59 at Savers minus 20%. This was in Savers in Redwood City. And I picked that up. And that was because I, another picker knew who I was. As soon as I walked in the door, I said, hey, go get it. Okay. Next up. All right. I went on a streak of these, especially during the pandemic. Um, people were like giving these away. This is a Sony CDP 400 CD mega storage player with remote. And uh, as I remember, I put new belts on this. There's a, I have a video showing you how to put the belts on these. Sold this for $249.95, $59.95 shipping. And what was weird about this one, I got this for free. The gentleman thought it didn't work and the reason he thought it he just didn't turn on or wouldn't spin, you know. And, and what it was was just the belts. And he, I got it for free. So, you know, I, that was during the pandemic. All right. Next up. Interesting. You know, I like some bobbleheads. Bobbleheads have taken a hit lately, it seems like. But this is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface uh, Head Knockers. Um, bobblehead and uh, I remember paying about six dollars for this uh, at Hope. I got three of them and this one here sold for eighty dollars and ninety five cents and buyer paid ten dollars shipping. Come on. All right. A lot of albums. Okay. I buy I sell a ton of albums. Uh, I have about a thousand probably sitting in the garage that I just haven't gone through but I consider them to be filler meaning I can throw them in when I've got some slow time, if I ever do, and I do 10 or 12 at a time. This one here came from another free lot during the pandemic. I picked up, I can't remember, about 50 or 70 of these, and most of them were selling for right around $30. This is the Talking Heads. Stop making sense. Sold for $38.95. Albums, if you hit the vein, is they are very, very lucrative for what you pay for them, and they're so easy to ship. So keep looking for albums, especially rock and roll. It seems like the 70s do well, but the 80s and 90s, like the Talking Heads and some of these guys, they didn't make as many albums as they kept producing. They got the CDs, so vinyl wasn't as regular in the 80s and 90s as it, you know, what, you know what I'm saying, as CDs and stuff came out. So they made fewer and fewer, so they're scarcer. I'll tell you a secret. Every time you see that Ch Tracy Chapman album, and it's in good shape, pick that thing up. For some reason, it always sells for anywhere from $50 to $80. The Tracy Chapman album. Very good album. All right. Maybe I can figure this out. All right. This one here is uh, fairly recently. It was some toys that I purchased. And, uh, boy, toys can be lucrative, uh, as you'll see. But uh, you have to really know that it's a very big category and very difficult so I need some help. So I have a good friend who uh, who helps me out when I need some uh, help. Again, networking. He is a he, we call it. He's the toy man. And uh, if I see something, I'll shoot a picture and send it to him. He'll say, "Get that, grab that, whatever." Right? Help me out. That goes back to the networking. Um, don't be afraid of those 
building those relationships, you'll be amazed at how much it will help you out down the road. Oh, I love this one. I, I, this might be one of my all-time favorites, this one here. I love this. This is, this is another album. I got this at Savers, $1.99. Walt Disney, The Haunted Mansion. And when I looked at it, I said, oh, this is good. Because it was like mint. It was so in such good condition. Took me a little while to sell it. I had, I had it at $199, but I took the offer, $179.96. $179.96 for the Haunted Mansion album. Look for that one. That's something everybody has a chance at getting at, especially in rural areas. There's a lot of old albums. That's a good category to kind of look at if you're in the rural areas, but you got to really be on top of your game there. A guy to watch is the Auction Professor. That guy has some good advice on older albums, and uh, that's where some good money's at. But look at him sometimes. Study albums, study what sells, and uh, you'll be amazed at what you'll find. Come on. All right. Man. This is the Hot Wheels. You cannot go wrong with Hot Wheels, right, guys? Hot Wheels. Um, 2006 Hot Wheels Sizzlers. I picked this up at Goodwills. I remember $10.98. cents. Sold for $145 and $34.95 shipping. It had three cars. It usually came with two. But uh, always look for Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels is really, really good sometimes. I just picked up a Tyco um, cliffhanger set yesterday for $6, which will get me about only about $100, but still it's $100, right? Six into $100. All right. CDs, okay, don't be afraid of CDs either. CDs, it, the way you sell CDs, I think, is you gotta get lots, and you gotta have lots of like artists. And this was the Monkees, a 12 CD set lot, sold for $135. Instead of selling single CDs, learn to lot them. This was a, a, one of those, again, another networking deal. I worked with my friend Mike, and we both went in on this only because it was just so vast. There was 2,000 of them. I, I handled um, most of the shipping and stuff because I could do it quickly and the listing. And then we kind of split this up uh, evenly. We paid $800 for 2,000 CDs. And I don't know how much we've made, but uh, we sold. I just sold another $125 worth today. But we, we sold thousands worth. Uh, of CDs. So don't be afraid of that. You know, look at those CDs and try to find those huge collections. I believe there's a guy, Galaxy CDs. He's pretty good. He's interesting to watch because he does a lot of CD stuff. So watch Galaxy CDs. All right. Next one. All right. Turntables. We're getting into my, getting into my bread and butter. I don't know how many turntables I've sold. Probably, you know, 20, 30, maybe more. I don't know. Quite a few. Um, probably the hardest thing to ship is a turntable. But if you watch my video on how I do that, just came out. If you watch that video, uh, it'll kind of give you a good idea of something to use to uh, help your shipping. This one sold for $300. I um, can't remember. I sold so many of these MK2s, which are DJs like to use these. So. I've sold about four or five of these, and I, I don't think I paid more than $20 for them. It was probably a Savers find. Um, there was actually, once one time I got two out of Savers, two MK2. Somebody donated them. And actually, I think I sold, I think I sold both of those locally. So that was a good deal. All right. Keep going. We'll see what we come up with here. All right. Here's one. Figurines, you know, goes back to bobbleheads, that kind of stuff. This one here was a $10 item at Goodwill, and it sold for $225. Got positive feedback on that one, too. Uh, so, you know, hey, people are looking to collect this kind of stuff. Tascam, all right? Tascam multi-tracks. I've probably sold about four of these, various ones. This one here was $147.95. Pretty sure this was a saver's find of probably no more than $11, $12. Um, pretty easy to test as long as you have a cassette.
All right, Black & Decker Space Maker can opener. The only way I sell any of these Space, space Makers generally is 99% of the time they have to be uh, brand new. This was brand new, sold for $100 and $17.95 shipping. All right, you probably saw this one here. This was from my guy with the storage locker. This was a vintage Royal Quiet Deluxe Pink Portable Typewriter, $360, $49.95. This one went to Australia. She gave me a real glowing feedback on this one. She just loved it. You can imagine she probably paid over $500, $600 with all the duties and shipping to Australia. Um, again, don't be afraid of global shipping. It's tricky. Sometimes you really are thinking, I shouldn't do it, I shouldn't do it, I shouldn't do it. Many times I've kind of wanted not to do it, but I, I still do it. And this is why occasionally you get something like this and she paid top dollar for it. All right, if you were new and you just kind of watched me, you saw this one. This was the toy I got out of Goodwill. Paid $10 for this guy. And this guy sold for $1,025. And look at I got positive feedback. So, wow, crazy, right? $5. This was like another really, really super sale. Kenner Centurion's Power Extreme. Older toy. It was only from 1986, and it got $1,000. Really, really cool. Another recent purchase, guys. Um, out of my book bin. So you know that I do the books in the morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I picked up this here. A lot of... Fantasy and science fiction, but what was key about this was there were six Stephen King short stories, one in each book, sold for two twenty-five. I also received positive feedback on this particular one. Uh, so uh, books can be very, very lucrative sometimes, as you've uh, seen some of my videos. A couple more guys. We'll just get through these real quick here. All right, another networking deal here. My friend up in Redwood City, he got this, and we're going to split this one. This is an Aqualung Titan LX regulator. We sold it for $299.95, and he paid $30 for it. I pay the fees. He pays that. That's our trade-off, 50-50 around that. So just kind of a way we uh, – no, I should say – let me get this correct. He pays for that. He pays for the item. I pay the taxes. The fees come out, and we split what's left over. There, now I explained it better. I'm not that dumb. All right, one last one to go. All right, just a simple amplifier, but still got $300 for it. And as I remember, I paid $19 at uh, Savers. Buyer pays $49.95. That I will leave you with. That's the item I'm shipping tonight. And uh, it shouldn't be too bad. So that's the one big item I have tonight, a $300 item. So, all right, guys, let me close this out here. Boom, boom. Thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you learn something, take something from everybody on YouTube, put it up here, go out in the world, make money, meet people, enjoy people. Um, as you can see, some of my videos are a little bit chatty. That's just me. Anyhow, we will see you next time. And thanks again for watching.